In this last section, we want to take a look at the advanced here. Now, you may really need to come to this part because it's not something that you know you need to worry about you know too much. But you do need to have a basic understanding of what this does and why it's it's here. So when you go to compress CSS, if you enable it, this is going to once again this section does a lot with making your site load fast and you know working smoothly. So when you click the compress CSS, your purge is going to clear all the cache from before. A cache is just storing information from previous. So when you go on the website, it stores things from before and before. So anytime that you update your site, it refreshes that cache. You just think of a cache like a place that you store something. And when you want to put something else new, you, you get rid of the old ones and then something new comes in. So that's what this does here. Compress CSS files. And the same thing for the JavaScript um, files because your site uses JavaScript, you just don't see it. Now, when you do go on the back end, uh, especially like on the server side, then you see a lot of JavaScript that has been used in order to make all this stuff works. Again, the beauty of this is you don't have to know JavaScript or CSS, all that stuff. They've done that for you. And if you wanted to exclude certain JavaScripts here, so let's say you're working with a developer and they want to exclude things. Well, this is where they're, they're going to come in and put the code in there um, to do that. So let's leave that off. Go to the uh, compiling. So the SCSS, the new format. Uh, so this helped once again your site, you know, a little faster, things to load quick, quickly or quicker, which makes a lot of sense because when you have a website that takes forever to load, People get frustrated, they get confused, they get angry, they just leave and sometimes never come back. So if your site is in production mode, you can just turn this off. And then once you're done, make sure to turn it back on. And then for the import and the export settings here, you can export all the settings of this particular template by clicking export. And it's going to ask you, do you want to allow well, this a lot of downloads uh, of this browser I'm using? And I can click allow. And it's going to, I've just exported all the settings um, that's on this template that sounds like the look, the layout, and things like that. So you can also import settings when you go to the Joom Shapers website. Uh, they have a section where you can download and import the settings. But once again, you know, when you're working on something like this, you don't really need to worry much about it. I just wanted you to have an understanding um, of how that works and what this section is for. So you don't re you may not have been to come in this part a whole lot unless you really have to. So this right now we've concluded this section with the you know the back end here for the Helix, but the Helix is integrated with so many parts of Joomla, and I want to cover SP Page Builder and also show you how do you change the navigation here, all this stuff, how do you update it, how do you move things around. So we're going to take a look at the menu system, and then we're going to take a look at the SP Page Builder and how to start to edit your site.